it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today. I know many of you always look at some cards that you see online and always wonder, how can I make a card that looks that good? I want to make a card like that. I always used to think that too until I realized that I can make cards that look just that good because they're my cards. They're the way I create things. I have my own unique style that's totally different from anybody else's. You do too. Now there are techniques that you can do that can make your cards even more fabulous. One of the things that I like to do is embrace the imperfections because imperfections are what makes your cards handmade. That's why they're not Hallmark cards, they're handmade. In today's video, I'm using three different techniques that all look like they're imperfect, but I basically used some techniques that gave the cards a distressed kind of feel. So we're gonna be touching on a couple of different techniques today. One of them is this one here. This one features a really fun textured design using transfer gel from ThermoWeb. It's really fun to be able to use ThermoWeb's transfer gel to create some really cool dimensional effects. And if you apply it on smooth, you get a perfect foiled impression all the time. I wanted to show you how you can apply it in a different way and get a textured effect. And it creates a very imperfect foiling design, but it looks so cool. It looks very distressed and unique. I really like it. Another way I use this foil is to apply it through a stencil with glue. And I applied the glue down with a glue pen, but I made sure I didn't apply the glue completely because that's going to give me a textured effect. As you can see here, this foiled thank you is not perfect, but it looks really cool. It looks like it was watercolored. And I really like how it has that neat texture, again, with a distressed feel. Finally, I'm going to show you how you can cover up mistakes. This one here, I actually foiled it perfectly, but I ended up scratching off a little bit of the foil by accident. To fix that, I just added some sequins to cover over top of the areas that I had accidentally lifted off some of the foil. So there are a variety of different ways that you can embrace the imperfections of foiling to get some amazing results. And I hope that today's video will encourage you to try some foiling, even if you feel like you can't do it, I know you can. So let's try some fun techniques and see what kind of things we can come up with. So the first card, like I said, we're gonna be creating that rose card with the beautiful textured foiling. I'm using a stencil here from Altenew and I'm applying down some of the transfer gel using an ink blending foam. This is going to allow me to get a textured effect. Normally, I would apply the transfer gel with a palette knife and get a smooth dimensional finish on the transfer gel. But when you apply it with an ink blending foam, you're putting a much thinner coat on, on top of your stencil. And that's going to also create a more textured effect because this blending foam is going to create some more texture than a palette knife would. So you have to let the transfer gel dry completely before you can start your foiling. So I've gone ahead and let that dry. Because it was a thin coat, it didn't take very long. I'd say maybe 20 minutes. I'm taking a beautiful piece of watercolor foil from ThermoWeb and I'm going to lay my card over top of the back side of the silver side of the foil, run it through my foiling machine in a piece of printer paper, and then after I've run it through, I'm going to press down on the paper really, really well, burnishing that foil into my transfer gel design. Now that my piece is ready to be revealed, I'm just going to lift off the foil and you can see the really cool textured design that we have left behind because we used the ink blending foam instead of using a palette knife. If you had used a palette knife, that design also would have been a little bit more thicker than it is right now. To continue that watercolor feel from the foil, I added a few splatters in the background using some gold watercolors, and I finished off the card by adding a sentiment from Mama Elephant and also from Altenew. So this is a great way to get a really cool distressed feel to your foiling and add a lot of really neat texture. I love the way it almost looks like it's been painted onto my card. Next, I wanna show you how I created those beautiful foiled leaves. Those were die cuts that have a little bit of dimension off of the card, and I foiled those using some green watercolor foil from ThermoWeb. I cut those leaves using a couple of pieces of toner paper. This is toner paper from ThermoWeb, and it has adhesive backing on the back side of it. They were die cut using an Altenew branch die, and I'm running them through my laminator with the printer paper as the carrier sheet. So again, I have the foil over top of the die cuts and it's inside of a printer paper carrier sheet that's going to run through my laminator. After that was run through, I burnished the paper a little bit and then I was able to peel off the foil and you see we have these beautiful foiled leaves. 
Now I ended up making a little mistake with the leaves because I scratched off a little bit of the foil as I was making the card. But I wanted to run with the technique and show you how you can fix your mistakes as you create. So I added on some ink blending to the cardstock here and I'm using some Distress Oxide ink so I get a really nice cool water texture in the background and that'll help frame up the leaves in the corners. I also die cut this beautiful Thanks script die from Honeybee Stamps using some of that same adhesive back toner sheets. This one I'm going to run through with some silver foil to help give a little bit of contrast off of those beautiful foiled leaves. Again, you want to make sure you put the foil on top of your die cut with the back facing the die cut and run it through your laminator or mink machine. So after that's been run through, I can now remove the die from my carrier sheet and I'll be able to peel off the foil and I'll have a beautiful silver foiled sentiment. I attached the sentiment straight down onto the card, but the leaves I ended up adding a little bit of dimension. I wanted to make sure that the leaves were a little bit higher than the sentiment, so I stacked up two layers of green cardstock die cut from that same leaf die from Altenew. I layered those behind each of my foiled pieces, so each foiled piece has two pieces of these green cardstock leaves behind it. That's just going to help give it a little bit of dimension off of the card, but nothing too bulky. Because those toner sheets were adhesive backed, I'm able to just quickly peel off the backing sheet of these leaves and then lay them down on top of those stacked pieces. These are very intricate dies, so it was very helpful having the adhesive backing on the back side of the foiled pieces because they are so delicate. This is where I was scratching off some of the foiling as I was adhering these down onto my stacked die cuts. And I was a little disappointed at first because I'm like, oh no, now I'm messing up my card. But then I was like, you know what? I'm going to try to fix it. So I ended up adding a bunch of sequins on top of the leaves and I actually was really thrilled with the way it turned out. They look like berries sitting on top of the leaves and I really love how it adds a nice bit of contrast and interest to my card design. So don't be afraid to continue with a card even if you've made a mistake with it because there's always usually a way that you can fix it. My final technique is creating a really cool watercolored effect using the foil and making it look like you've painted on the design using the foil. So I'm taking a stencil here from Faber-Castell. This is a really cool stencil that has a beautiful script sentiment on it. I'm using a ThermaWeb glue pen and this glue pen is so handy for adding small areas of foil, but I wanted to try using it to fill in the sentiment here on this stencil. But I wanted to also, like I said, to have some texture and make it look like it was painted on. So I don't want to have all the areas completely perfectly covered. So I'm kind of being a little messy with the application of this pen. So don't feel like you have to be perfect when you're applying this down. I let that dry just for a little bit. I wanted to make sure that it was still slightly wet. So I didn't let it dry for too long. But I'd say maybe about five minutes I let it dry so it wasn't wet wet. Then I'm going to go ahead and take my foil and add this on top of my piece and I'm making sure to put the back side of the foil on top of my sentiment. A good trick to remember when adhering foil down onto your project is that you want the pretty side facing up. So I'm putting this into my carrier sheet and then I'm going to go ahead and run it through my laminator. Once it's been run through I again want to make sure I burnish this so that way I know all areas of this piece has been completely pressed down and I have a good coverage. Then I can remove the foil off of my paper and you can see we are left with this beautiful design. I'm going to rub off some of the extra pieces that were hanging on the edges and that also helps give me a little bit more of a distressed look when I rub a soft cloth over top. Now because I want this to look like it's been painted, I'm going to take that glue pen and rub a couple of areas on top of my paper, kind of making some splatter effects. Then I'll be able to take my foil and using the scrap that I had left over from my sentiment, I'm going to push that into the glue and that leaves behind these really cool splattered designs that look like they were like splatters of paint that ended up on your paper. I really was thrilled with how this card turned out. This one was actually my favorite out of all the cards. It was the simplest, but yet it was, I think, the one that turned out so cool because I love the way that it has this painted effect. And this foil from ThermoWeb is so pretty. It has these different colors mixed in so it makes it look like it's been watercolored. It's a really great way to get some fun effects with your foiling. To finish off this card I just added a blue card base on the underneath side and I attached this panel at an angle so some of the blue was showing from underneath. I hope that
hope today's video has inspired you to try some foiling techniques and don't be afraid to embrace the imperfections of foiling. If you mess up and if you have some areas that don't fully adhere down onto your paper, don't be afraid to continue with the card and come up with some really fun ways to be able to use any of those imperfections in ways that will make your cards look really unique and fun. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more inspiration. Thanks for watching. Bye.